previous discussions, we have seen how sorting can help us speed up searching by enabling binary search that is much faster than brute force search. So far, we have learnt about three sorting algorithms. Two slow sorting algorithms, selection sort and insertion sort with a time complexity of order n square and a fast algorithm called merge sort with a time complexity of order n log n. In this discussion, we will see a very popular fast sorting algorithm called quicksort. Quicksort is a very popular sorting algorithm. In fact, it is such a nice algorithm that unless the array you are sorting is very small, you should just try using quicksort before trying any other sorting algorithm. It has an order n log n time complexity, just like merge sort that we studied last time, but it can be much faster than merge sort in practice. Recall that merge sort divides the given unsorted array into two equal halves, then sorts them by calling merge sort recursively, and then it spends the bulk of the time merging the sorted arrays. Note that the splitting step is quite inexpensive since merge sort just finds the middle index of the array and splits the array there. Quicksort also splits the array into two and recursively sorts the smaller arrays. However, Quicksort is much more careful about splitting the array so that once the two smaller arrays are sorted, there is actually no need to merging at all. This is the secret sauce behind quicksort and it is based on a cool trick known as partitioning. The time complexity analysis of quicksort is much more complicated and will not be covered in this course. However, on average, quicksort also enjoys an order n log n time complexity. So let us look at this partitioning technique. Say we have an unsorted array A with n elements and let us choose one of those elements P and call it the pivot. The partitioning technique then rearranges the elements in the array so that all elements smaller than p come first, followed by the pivot element p itself, followed by all elements larger than p. For example, let's take this array and the element 3 as the pivot. A possible partitioned array would look like the following, with all elements smaller than 3 coming first, followed by 3, followed by all elements larger than 3. Note that the left and right portions of this array are not sorted yet and they need not be sorted because that is the job of the recursive calls to sort them. Also, note that the two portions are not and need not be of the same size. Now that we know about this partitioning idea, the quicksort algorithm is very easy to explain. Given an unsorted array such as this, we choose a pivot element and partition the array with respect to the pivot. That gives us two smaller arrays, let's say L and R. Note that a side effect of partitioning is that every element of L is smaller than every element of R. This means that once we sort the arrays L and R recursively, there is no need to merge them. As we observed, this time saved on the merge step is key to quicksort's speed. We will now discuss an algorithm that partitions while taking into account the possibility that the pivot element might repeat in the array. However, this algorithm will not be an in-place algorithm, that is, it will use order n extra memory. As we commented, the time complexity analysis of quicksort is beyond the scope of this course. Here is pseudocode for the quicksort algorithm. This algorithm uses a partition method which we shall soon describe. The most common ways to choose the pivot element are to either choose one of the end elements or a random element. However, a more expensive way to choose the pivot element is by finding the median. Let us develop the partitioning algorithm now. This algorithm will proceed by maintaining an active region that is sandwiched between two inactive regions. We will maintain an invariant that elements in the left inactive region will always be strictly smaller than the pivot and those in the right inactive region will always be strictly larger than the pivot. We will take care of elements equal to the pivot later. Note that this will not be an in-place algorithm. So let us look at the partitioning algorithm at work. Here is our original unsorted array 
and here is the blank array which will eventually contain the partitioned array. Initially, our active region is the entire blank array and let's say our pivot is 4. Note that 4 appears twice in the array. We start scanning the original array from left to right. If we come across an element that is strictly larger than the pivot, we put it in the rightmost empty spot of the active region and then shrink the active region. If we come across an element strictly smaller than the pivot, we put it in the leftmost empty spot of the active region and shrink the active region. If we come across an element with value equal to that of the pivot, we do not do anything for now since we do not know yet where will all the fours need to be placed in the partitioned array. For now, we just keep moving on with the promise that we will insert all these skipped elements later in one go. We keep going on putting elements to the leftmost or rightmost empty location of the active region and shrinking the active region. We continue to not do anything if we find elements equal to that of the pivot value. Finally, once we have finished scanning the entire original array, we simply fill all the vacant locations with the pivot element since those must have been the occurrences of the pivot element that we have missed. And as you can see, we are done. Here is pseudocode for the partition algorithm. Notice that after the first for loop has ended, any empty locations are filled up with the pivot value and one of the indices of the pivot element in the partitioned array is returned. Can you develop an in-place version of this algorithm that does not require creating a separate blank array? Here is a hint to help you along with this exercise. The choice of pivot is crucial to the quicksort algorithm. Bad pivots are those for which, once we partition, either the left or the right array is very small. To take an extreme example, suppose we choose the smallest or the largest element of the array as pivot. Then one of the arrays would be completely empty and quicksort would end up having an order n square time complexity. Pivots that are around the median are most beneficial. However, choosing a random element is often sufficient to avoid the bad cases with high probability. Having learned about so many sorting algorithms, selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort and quick sort, it is time now for some big picture gyan. Although selection and insertion sort are slow algorithms with order n square time complexity, they can actually be faster than merge sort and quick sort for small arrays. The reason behind this weird behavior is the constants hidden inside the big O notation. Thus, when sorting a very large array, although it is common to use quicksort, but once the recursive calls inside quicksort are made to subarrays that have fewer than let's say 10 to 50 elements, instead of continuing to make a recursive call to quicksort, we make a call to insertion sort or selection sort. There are several other kinds of sorting algorithms that work only on integer arrays that can be even faster than quicksort and they can sort an array with n elements in just order n time. However, speed is just one of the parameters on which sorting algorithms are judged. Whether a sorting algorithm is in place or not, whether it is stable or not, whether it can sort partially sorted arrays ultra fast or not, are other desirable properties that are often considered while deciding on the best algorithm for an application. However, these details are usually covered in a more advanced course on algorithms. For now, this is all we have on the topic of searching and sorting. I hope you have a very nice day and see you next time.